Okay. Um, to save my hands, um, we're going to be applying the theorems that we've learned so far, intermediate value theorem, extreme value theorem, role theorem, and mean value theorem. But to save my hand a little bit and to save the time on this video, I'm going to show each of these theorems. Now, if you're, if you're needing to copy them down, then you can always pause the video and copy it and then continue on. Intermediate value theorem says if we're continuous between A and B, so our graph goes through it, goes this way, there's a number between them where we have an X value that gives me that Y value. Basically, it says we're going to hit every Y value on the way up between A and B, F of A and F of B. Extreme value theorem says if we have a continuous function, then our absolute maximums and absolute minimums, minimums occur either at one of the endpoints, like that's the maximum, or it can occur at our relative max or min. Like here, this minimum, relative minimum, actually is the absolute minimum because nothing else is lower. Rolle's theorem. Now, Rolle's theorem and mean value theorem, you don't just have to be continuous. In addition, you have to be differentiable. No sharp turns. So, for Rolle's theorem, we're continuous and differentiable, and our two endpoints have the same y value. Then there exists at least one value c where the derivative is zero. There, 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 or it could be like that, or it could be a horizontal line. But I dare you to take any of those and find a way to take the derivative and it not be zero. Okay, so Rolle's theorem says that we're going to have the derivative equal to zero at some point between those two points. Mean value theorem says if we are continuous and differentiable, notice these both have to have those conditions. Then for this one, the derivative of the, of the slope of the tangent line is going to equal the slope of the secant line between those two points. So our main focus in this section is to apply what we've had. So the first example, the rate at which the water flows out of the pipe is in gallons per hour is given by a differentiable function. Now immediately, if it is differentiable, then it is definitely continuous. So the table below shows the rate as measured every three hours for a 24-hour period. So if we're going to estimate R prime, that is the derivative of R at 5. In other words, the slope at 5. So this means we need to find the slope around 5 because it is not in the picture here. So that would be the rate of change around 5, and we're estimating this. So around 5 would be to take 6 and 3. So R of 6 minus R of 3 over 6 minus 3. So R of 6 was 10.8. R of 3 is 10.4. And the difference in our hours is 3. This gives me approximately 0.133. And let's think what our units would be. It was gallons per hour divided by hours. So that's going to be gallons per hour squared. Now we also want to explain what this value means. So we have a positive first derivative. So since r prime of 5 is greater than 0, The rate at which the water is flowing out of the pipe
is increasing after five hours, or at time equal five. Now let's find the average rate of change from t equals three to t equals eighteen. Average rate, think secant line. So we're just finding slope. Eighteen gets ten point seven. Three and the R value of ten point four over fifteen. And this gives me point oh two. Again, a gallons per hour divided by hours, so gallons per hour squared. Is there a time between 0 and 24 where our derivative would equal 0? I need to think Rolle's theorem. For Rolle's theorem to be true, R of t is continuous and dis differentiable. We already knew that. The next thing I need to check are my two endpoints. So R of 0 was 9.6. R of 24 is 9.6. So R of 0 equals R of 24. Therefore, Rolle's theorem guarantees A value C between 0 and 24 such that the derivative is 0. The next one is giving us the cost function for bottles of Pepsi Cola. X is the order size and numbers of bottles in hundreds. Is there a guaranteed value of R on the interval from 0 to 3 such that the average rate of change is equal to the instantaneous rate of change? The average rate of change, that's secant line, and then this is the derivative, the tangent line. So first we have to make sure that we are continuous and differentiable from 0 to 3. Oh, 0, 1 divided by 0 is undefined. So, since C of 0 is undefined, C of X is not continuous. zero to three. Therefore, this would have been the mean value theorem. Slope equals slope does not guarantee a value R such that the derivative the slope of the secant line equals the slope of the tangent line. Okay, on B, it's actually looking at the interval from 3 to 6. Well, we're good from 3 to 6. We're bad at 0, and we're bad at negative 3. But 3 to 6, we're good. So we do have to test those endpoints. So C of 3 and C of 6. So take a moment and go ahead and find those values. We plug that into the calculator, we're going to get 8,333.333. And we plug in 6, we're also getting that. Now we're good between 3 and 6, so we can say since C of R is continuous and differentiable,
on 3 to 6. And C of 3 equals C of 6. The roll theorem guarantees that existence. There are several ways you can do this. You can find the derivative of this and then figure out where it's set equal to zero. Or we're really looking for a max or min value. Now note that if we have, we know we're between 8,333 and 8,333 there, but this is going to be a very large graph. Now our x values aren't going to be that large. But if I type this into the calculator, I'm going to want to set my window pretty big. I'm going to go from 2.5 to 6.5. My y values need to go all the way to, oh, let's go to 10,000. Now, it looks like we might have a dip right there. So I'm going to go for a minimum somewhere between, oh, I'm going to do somewhere between 3 and 6. That makes it easy. That value is 4.098, and here's the y value that goes with it. So for this part, I'm going to write r equals 4.098. But down here, I need to find the greatest cost. Remember, we are continuous. So our maximum cost, we need to check our endpoints, which we know what they were at. We need to check that minimum value. And we need to check the other endpoints. Which one is our overall absolute maximum? Well, that's the $8,333.33. When either 300 or 600, that was just six, bottles are ordered. Two more. Next one. A car company introduces a new car for which the number of cars sold is modeled by this function. T is the time in months. Now, sometimes it's helpful to just kind of make a note off to the side. I know that we are not continuous at negative two. So we need to remember that. Find the value of S prime of 2.5. Now, since this is calculator portion, we can practice using the calculator to find that derivative. So, derivative, alpha F2, third option. We're going to just type in our function. Three point three three. So S prime of two point five equals one thirty three 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 three. And what's that mean? Okay, so that's the derivative, it's the rate of change in this cars per month. So we want to interpret it, it's positive. 
So S prime of 2.5 is positive. Since it's positive, then the number of cars sold is increasing at a rate of 133.333 cars per month at time equals 2.5 months. Could it go up after that? Could it go down? Yes. But we don't know. B, average rate of change, second line, sold over the first 12 months. So that means when you take S of 12 minus S of 0 over the difference in the time, so 12 minus 0. Remember, you can actually plug this straight into your calculator. You should get 96.429. That means the average, on average, 96.429 cars are sold per month. And sales are increasing. Is it possible that a value of C between 0 and 12 exists such that our instantaneous rate of change is equal to the average rate of change? Well, we know we're differentiable. We need to check our two endpoints. S of 0 and S of 12. And I plug in 0, I had 150. Plug this in, I get actually no seven point one four three. Oh, what I'm thinking of the wrong theorem. This is saying we're equal. This is M V T. I'm not having to check those endpoints. M V T. I need to make sure that we're differentiable. Are we? Between zero and twelve we are. S of T is continuous. And differential. Now, I already know that rate of change that I'm trying to find. So I need to know when my derivative is equal to that. So we are going to have to take a minute and actually find the derivative. Go ahead and distribute. That's fifteen hundred minus twenty seven hundred times t plus two to the negative one. Now, so when I take this as derivative, that's going to be gone. That's going to become positive twenty seven hundred t plus two to the negative two. Times the derivative of the inside, which is just a one. So I want to know when that is going to equal ninety six point four two nine. So if I cross multiply, I end up getting twenty seven hundred. Divided by 96.429 equals t plus 2 squared. And 
heck is when we're back 16, 28? I can actually solve this one. Square root by sign. Subtract 2. Oops, I forgot my plus or minus. I need to figure out which one is going to be in that ballpark. What's going to be the plus? 3.212. So negative 2 plus the square root of 2 is going to be the correct answer. The last one is actually going to be a really, really, really good one to look before the test. Functions f and g are differentiable for all real numbers. Important. g is strictly increasing. It means g prime is always positive. Make a note of that. The table above gives values of the function in their first derivative at selected values. Function h is given by f of g of x minus 6. Find the equation of the tangent line when x is 3. So first we need of h. So we need to find h of 3. So we can have that point of tangency. That's f of g of 3 minus 6. Okay, so f g of 3. 3. g is 4. f of 4. That's negative 1. So my point of tangency is 3, negative 7. Now we need the slope at that point. So let's think about the derivative when we have a chain rule. Well, we're supposed to take the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. Minus 6 is that's 0. Now we're going to plug in 3. f prime of g of 3 times g prime of 3. g of 3 is 4. g prime of 3 is 2. f prime of 4 is 3. So now I have my slope. I have my point and I have my slope. y plus 7 equals 6 times x minus 3. Find the rate of change over the interval 1 to 3 of h. So we need to do h of 3 minus h of 1 over 3 minus 1. So I'm going to need to plug in 1 as well. So f of g of 1 minus 6. So plugging into that original function. So 1 goes into g and gives me a 2. That goes into f and gives me a 9. So 9 minus 6 is a 3. So h of 3 is negative 7. h of 1 is 3. The denominator of 2 negative 10 divided by 2, which is a negative 5. Explain whether must be a value of r between 1 and 3 so that h of r is negative 2. Well, first off, h of x is continuous. Negative 2 is between negative 7 and 3. So, h of 3. So it's between h of 3 and h of 1. IBT guarantees a value R. H of R is negative 2. So 
Root differential and continue it. So this might be true. We already knew that our rate of change between 1 and 3 was negative 5. This is asking if there's a point where the tangent line would be at negative 5. Well, h of r, h of x, sorry, is continuous and differentiable. And h of 3 minus h of 1 equals negative 5. Therefore, MVT guarantees it.